A few months ago, I uttered some famous last words. Temporary desk setup. This is it right here. This plywood workbench that I meant to hold 3D printers is where I've been doing all of my 3D CAD design work, my video editing, my business management since January. It's now May. That means it is time that we use 3D printing to create the ultimate standing desk setup. We're going to turn this disaster of a space into this masterpiece. Here in front of me is my butcher block top workbench I've been using in the studio for quite some time. But this is going to become my new standing desk in another part of the studio. So I need to get it off of here, but I'm not gonna subject you to the cleaning and all of that. Let's just jump right into how I'm gonna use 3D printing to make this my ultimate standing desk. The largest chunk of parts are a jigsaw puzzle that is a template to create a sweeped edge to the front of this desk. I want something like this style of desk, but I'm gonna create it myself with this more rugged butcher block top. I'll assemble the puzzle, then I'll clamp it to the desk top, and that'll give me a guide for my router to use a flush trim top bearing router cutter. Simply put, this is a straight cutter that goes into my router and has a bearing at the top edge of it that's meant to guide along something, whether it be another object you're trying to reproduce or a template like I have here. When I designed this in Fusion 360, I created an interlock so they each locked into place exactly where they needed to be. Before I ran off and printed all of these parts, I printed just a section where the interlock was. It's always something I do if I have an interference fit or a threaded design. I print that section of my design first to confirm that it's good before I go for the full prototype. Now, if I had a CNC router or a large enough laser cutter, I could have cut this out of plywood or some other material to use as a guide in a single piece but I don't have those tools and I do have 3D printers. So I've had to print these in six separate pieces, but that's really not that big of a deal. There will be more 3D printed stuff later in this video, but there are some things to show you that a laser cutter, a CNC couldn't do, such as this router that I'm going to be using didn't have a vacuum adapter for the shop vac. I designed and 3D printed this one here and the base plate was missing off of this thing. Rather than seeking out a replacement one for this probably 15, 20 year old Craftsman router, I designed and 3D printed my own and had it the same day. Before we start throwing wood chips and making a mess in the studio, let's take a look at what we're building atop of, the standing desk itself. In front of us is a FlexiSpot E7 standing desk base. And I wanna thank FlexiSpot as they are the sponsors of this video and they're helping make this project, this much needed office update possible. Let's get this thing unboxed and we're assembled. We'll discuss the specs of it as we go, and then we'll move on to the rest of this project. This desk base is crafted with a robust welded steel construction that meets my standards as a former professional fabricator. Heck, it's got the gene seal of approval. You know it's top quality. Assembly of the FlexiSpot E7 is a breeze thanks to the straightforward instructions that it comes with. You'll be up and running experiencing the health benefits of an adjustable height desk in no time. The legs on the E7 are a three-stage dual motor design for maximum stability and power. This can go from all the way down at 22.8 inches all the way up to 48.4 inches and lift 355 pounds while doing it. That's two and a quarter of me. Controlling the desk is done through a touchpad interface that's user-friendly and has four programmable presets on it. It also has a USB charge port on the side, which is great for keeping your devices both powered and close at hand. Are you ready to upgrade your workspace? Well, check out FlexiSpot at the link in the description to find their extensive range of desk bases, tops, and accessories. With the desk base assembled and ready to go, it's time to put together this template and start making some sawdust. First things first, I need to measure out and mark out the center line of this desk so I know where my template is gonna go. I need to be sure to mark my line further past where I think I need to go with it. So when I cut away material or I put the template on, I can still see that line and know that I'm in the right position. Once I know where the template is going, I can put it together, smack it together. 
I'm not going to jump into using this as a router guide immediately. First, I'm going to just use it as a template to mark out on the top where my line is going to be so that I can then come in with a jigsaw and remove the majority of the material. Because the router's not going to be at all happy about digging through an inch and a half of wood right off the bat, whereas if I jigsaw it out, I'll have a much better go of it. Ta-da! The big chunk of wood is out of my way and now I can start to actually route this out. With the wood chips flying, it feels like a perfect opportunity for a little slow motion. The guide's doing a beautiful job of getting this bit to follow along exactly where I want it, but there are some areas where I definitely left a little bit too much material, and I had some tear outs at each end. I probably rushed this a little bit, but it could be worse. I'm not only doing the swept recess in this, but I also want to round off the corners, so I created a template for that as well. Once again, jigsaw off the chunk of it and the router to clean it up. This butcher block top is inch and three quarters thick, but my bit is only an inch and a half deep. It was just what I was able to get. So I had to come down from underneath with another router bit to clean up that last quarter of an inch. This is also a flush cut router bit, but it has a bearing at the top edge, meaning it can then follow off of what my other router bit just cut. At this point, I've got the recess cut in. I've got the corners rounded off. I am now done with that flush trim router bit. It didn't go perfectly, dug in a few places more than I might have liked, but that was user error as much as anything. It's good enough for what I was trying to achieve. I'm gonna move on to some finishing details. Usually to finish off something like this, I would use a round over bit. Put a nice soft radius edge all the way around this top so that you don't have any sharp corners cutting you or anything like that. And I will do that on most of this butcher block top. But this area where my arms are gonna rest in this recess where I will be sitting, I want something more gradual, something tapered. This is a one inch deep, 30 degree taper. Now normally I would put it into my router like this and run all the way along the edge but that's not the direction I wanna go with this. This is where using a 3D printer to create this base plate for this router shines because I can do some more custom stuff with this. Namely, I created a radius base plate for that router that follows the radius of this recess in the desktop. It also has a fence on it that's gonna allow me to set this down on the desktop and run this tapered bit, well, the way it's not really intended to go. With my guide and tapered bit assembled, I can get to cutting on this thing. I'm gonna go in a couple of stages. Cut one pass, then push the bit out a little further, cut another pass along the entire length, and then push the bit out further till I get to the point where I want. I don't want to try and remove all of this material in a single pass. That one inch 30 degree taper would remove a lot of material in a single go. With my cuts made, I now have a 60 degree angle off the top of this thing for a more subtle transition to where my arms are gonna rest. But I wanna come back through one more time with the flat plate on the router and use the 30 degree angle the way it's meant to be. So I have like a step angle to this. This is gonna allow me to come in with a sander and create a more gradual transition to this edge. And that means it's time to play everybody's favorite game, sanding, sanding, and more sanding. The only 3D printing involved here is my shop vac adapter on my orbital sander, unfortunately. So I'm not gonna bore you with that whole process. We'll jump right to the stain and the poly already applied on this desktop so we can get to the next thing that's actually gonna be interesting, which is a pile of properly printed practical parts. Starting with these hockey puck things. These have to do with what's down here, the floor. The studio is a garage, and as such, various sections of the floor are not very level. This desk does have adjustable height feet on it to help you level it out. But this wall behind me that I built in a previous video you can check out here is a garage door, so it's an especially out of level spot. As such, I jumped into Fusion 360 and designed up these spacers that are gonna go underneath three out of the four feet to give the desk a better starting place. Then I can use its existing adjustable feet for just fine adjustment to level it in. I've had to do this on a handful of pieces of furniture and another desk in the house because the house is built in the 1800s and the floors are not even close to level. I also printed up a couple of actual shim pieces to go inside of those spacers so that I can do some fine adjustment with these instead of the feet. Again, just providing myself all the options I can. 
Now that the desk is nice and level and beautifully finished, it could probably stand another coat of poly, but I don't want to keep dragging this project out beyond the months that it already has been. I've got a couple more prints that I'm going to use on this, but I need to get the computer set up over here so I know where things are going to be to put those in place. Now comes the time of moving the computer that I use to make my livelihood, which is oh so stressful, even though it really shouldn't be, but it is. It's time to just do this. As I'm mounting up the monitors, I found another 3D print that I want to show you. This VESA adapter I made a long time ago. I didn't make it for this video. It's a 100 millimeter offset. So it moves the VESA mount down lower because I mount this monitor in portrait orientation. With that puzzle piece in place, you can probably see the vision here. This monitor and the portrait monitor are on the same mounting plane. So that 100 millimeter offset raises this monitor up. Otherwise, it would be hitting the desk right now. It puts it in a much better positioning. Link in the description if you want to find that file. I'm taking this opportunity to make a few upgrades too, like a Thunderbolt hub for one cable PC connection. The folks at Beacon sent over the Mix Create so I can be heard through the Beacon mic that they also sent. Something I'm not changing is how I mount my stream camera to my desk. I've done an entire dedicated video about this mounting system before. I've also been running a Voron desk map for quite a while that Fabrico sent over and I just like it. But in an effort to improve ergonomics, I decided to throw in a Kinesis Gaming split keyboard. At this point, I've got most of the stuff on the desk. There's only a few more details. That's where a couple of more 3D prints are coming in. This here is a headphone hanger. It's just gonna get screwed underneath the desk to hang my headphones on. And this is one of two speaker stands that's going to clamp to the desktop at each corner of it so I can get my studio reference speakers in place and get them up off the desk so there's a little more desk space and maybe a cleaner look. I also printed this TPU piece to act as a gasket underneath that stand so it's not digging into my desktop. With the final piece added to this, my Voron 0.1 living up to its destiny as a desktop 3D printer, it's time for the oh so fun task of cable management. I 3D printed some pieces for this already. I've got these designs that I already had for VHB taping cable management pieces to 3D printers, but I added a hole in the middle of them so I can use a screw underneath the desktop that allows them to be more secure, and I can always print these as I go. I know you can buy a big tub of these for a couple of dollars, and I'm probably spending as much on filament to produce them, but I can make them as I need in the color that I want and just have them at hand and not have to run to the store, which generally takes an hour plus out of my day. That's time I could be being productive. Cable management is rarely fast, but it was fairly easy here because I was able to put the desk up so high, I could sit on a footstool underneath of it and work really comfortably, which made a big difference as did the cable management tray that FlexiSpot included with this desk. That really helped me to achieve what I think is probably the best cable management job I've ever done. Not that that's a very high bar to clear. And with that, I have a beautiful, not temporary workspace that I can edit these videos, do my 3D design work and prototype print right here with the Voron 0.1 on the end of the desk. It needs some updates, but that's coming in a video soon. And I'll once again have a setup that I can use dedicated for streaming or maybe tutorials here at the computer. Don't look at the mess the studio is behind the camera back there. All of that atop of the FlexiSpot E7 standing desk base. Yes, they sponsored this video, but I am legitimately impressed with how stable and solid this desk is. I used it as a workbench on the other side of the studio for a couple of weeks while delays and other projects came up, and I'm going to miss having it over there. I'm loving it as my desk, but I'm also really going to miss it as a workbench. All that to say thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. There's a link in the description to them, and let's take a look at the final result of my ultimate standing desk that 3D printing helped me build.
and that is my new ultimate work desk facilitated by 3D printing. I have to say, I've been working at this desk for a couple of days now, and it is everything that I hoped it would be. It's making my work experience so much better than that plywood table was, and I gained space for two more 3D printers in the shop, because I really needed that. Aside from that, I am loving having the 0.1 here at the end of the desk. It's kind of what I always intended for this machine and never got around to doing, so I'm really glad I've finally done it. Does mean I need to fast track the repairs and upgrades on that machine, however. That's gonna wrap it up for this one, folks. Maybe let me know in the comments whether you got some ideas out of this or you think I should have done something differently, or maybe check out one of these previous videos, the one where I built the wall here behind me, or the one that YouTube thinks is best for you, and consider getting subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.